Third? Yeah, this is the third time you are appearing on this committee. We want to thank you very much for your time that you are sparing for us. We never tried to you again for this third time because we are winding up to make our report. And you know, it's not good to write a report that is not balanced. We needed to hear from both sides. Now that we've heard from the witnesses, we heard from you, we wanted you to give me some 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 concluding words as we are going to submit on the floor of parliament. Nevertheless, we had to invite you with the other officials and uh, like the request was we submitted the names of witnesses to you who had testified on this committee and we had to get some cases. So, please, I know you always time conscious. We have another meeting to win another group to meet. We request you since we sent you everything to be as brief as possible, following exactly what we asked you to do. We thank the book. And I'm really uh, want to start by saying really know that you have long time tested partners in this struggle of fighting for human rights. I, as I told you last time, I think that the whole effort depends on how we trust one another. Some of the people who have known us <clears throat> for all the time that we have served this country know our record. Uh, at least my record is very clear. I have been in this service for a long time in different cap cap capabilities. I'm a commander, minister of defense, uh, director general, external security organization, now minister of security, member of the National Security Council. And I like repeating that if you looked at our code of conduct, which we did, which we made, is a very strict code of conduct, both for the military and for the intelligence services. Now, in regard to how we are moving, this being the third, um, the third appearance, I really want to say that I think there is a bit of a problem in our methods of work to help the committee. Our methods of work have some problems which, as parliament, me as a member of parliament, I feel we can improve and do better. And you are raising the issue of visiting. And I say where need is maybe, where there is a need, there is, we, could, we could visit. But I was really concerned and to some extent ashamed to see members of parliament peeping through holes of doors. I was even greatly concerned when you started entering private people's homes, trespassing on their homes by force, forcing the doors open, as a member of parliament, I felt ashamed. I said there could have been a better way, and that's what I want to establish, that we do things a bit smarter for our image, for the image of our parliament and for the image of our country. In a common focus, with a common objective, with a common objective of all of us serving our country for the betterment, not for getting worse. Because if you had asked, it would have been very easy to show you where you could go and where you could not go, or which are the safe houses or which are not. So that was partly also due to what I have seen here, what I have seen here, <laughs> because I see that some of you are beginning to deal with Ugandans, very interesting Ugandans. You are beginning to really come to terms of some of the situations which we handle almost on a daily basis. And I must thank you for really <laughs> doing that effort because at least 
it is it is bringing out a lot of facts it is bringing out a lot of truths when we are dealing with some of our people please don't take everything for granted you saw how they misled you saying oh this is a safe house oh this is a safe house liberate to mislead you proceed here madam chair granted <coughs> madam chair for the honorable minister to start blaming the committee for visiting the safe houses yet when he appeared before us on the first day we interested him in as far as visiting these safe houses are and the response was really negative is he procedure removing right madam chair i i don't think he's moving right because here at parliament we have on spot visiting that is even in our rules of procedure we may not inform but we do on spot visiting and we see what takes place so honorable minister besides blaming us we were doing our work as a committee i will blame you and the order madam chair I request to apologize i madam. request this committee to apologize citizens of uganda <coughs> whose rights you violated madam chair order and an apology i even passed that order madam chair order yes please madam chair is it in order for the honorable minister <coughs> to demand an apology from this committee which was executing its duties when the honorable minister denied us chance for him to lead to lead us to the safe houses is it in order honorable minister i think you have what to answer for us we are doing our work as a committee not as a ministry so you have what to answer why don't you go straight forward to what you're supposed to answer i am answering in the interest of this country i am here as a member of parliament also and to tell you how security is handled on that i never denied you even to visit i said where i need be that's what is on record where there is a need you may visit where there is no need you may not visit but there is a method of work that's what i'm talking about honorable minister methods of work on how to deal with security matters is you don't order just, again madam chair you don't just bump into somebody order else. again madam chair madam chair you trespass madam chair order madam chair you indicated on the floor of parliament to the deputy speaker that this they are denying us access to these safe houses and what was the response from the deputy speaker go ahead and carry out your duties so is it in order for the right for for for, for this minister in charge of security to bring in security within our committee right now yet is in charge of security to disorganize the committee is it is it in order Honorable minister really you're not in order you're the very person who said in this committee that you should not even visit the safe houses yes. You even didn't tell us the list of safe houses that are in the country. So it was incumbent um, to the members of these committees to find out where these safe houses are, where we beat uh, Snaga, that is okay, because we were doing our investigation role. Madam, in somebody's home, do you apologize or not? M Madam Chair. Madam Chair. I don't know whether Madam Chair we are in order really uh, drawing us to continue with to me what i term was arrogance in as far as his responses are concerned madam chair is he in order to continue with that kind of arrogance yet he has come to to to, to, to this committee for the third time yet he is the one who denied us access to safe houses and we went on to investigate on our own to find out which is what is he in order Honorable Minister, we did all what we did basing on what you said here. If you had told us that we have this safe house here, this location, we could have gone in the proper way that you think we had to do our work as investigators. Now, if you start saying we trespassed, we did this and this and this, I think that one leave it to us. Yeah, okay, we can leave that matter. This is the process. Of whether you trespassed or not, let's go to the subject that you want. But the methods of work are very important in whatever we are doing. Madam Chair. Yes, please. It is a procedure issue? Yes, please. Uh, Madam Chair, the committee has its own terms of reference. 
I don't know whether you're requesting the minister to instruct us on how to move, but I would think we have our ways of moving and we developed our, uh, our ways of work, especially on this issue that we are discussing. So, Madam Chair, can you instruct the minister not to instruct us on what we should have done? Honorable Minister, thank you. As a citizen of this country, as the longest serving member of parliament, to guide, to inform the public on methods of work in regard to matters connected with security. However much parliament may want to go anywhere, there are limitations. Order, Madam it's Chair. It's my duty. Madam Chair, order. Madam Chair, order. Madam Chair, because we knew that the Honorable Minister in charge of security was supposed to really, we were supposed to share information with him. That's why, using our wisdom as a committee, we first invited him and we interfaced with him about the subject matter we are investigating. And we thought it's going to be cooperative, which he did, he didn't. So, is he in order to continue? Lamenting and also, please, honorable members, lower your voices because there is another meeting. So, is it in order, Madam Chair, to continue really delaying us? Yet, we gave him we gave him an opportunity to hear from him first before we move out. Issues, do you think even the way we, we invited you was procedurally wrong? Are you coming to a wrong committee? Because if you are appearing to a wrong committee, a committee of wrong procedures, then it is uh, no, not no. necessary for you no, to Madam come to Chair. a committee that is not moving proper. No, Madam Chair, it is a right committee. It is a very right committee, and I really don't want to go into your terms of reference or your methods of work. But uh, what I want to make a point, first of all, on record, and the record of when we were here is there. I repeat it, I said where there is a need. I was responding to, that is what I said. You never informed me that you wanted to visit, you said you wanted, I said yes, where there is a need. The, the, what I'm explaining on methods of work is that there are ways, and I want us to cooperate, to see how you do some of the work, and I can, and that's why I am here. That's why I am here to explain, I said there is this way, there is this way, this one is possible, this one is not possible. And I am not missing my words. I am telling this committee there are places where you can never get because they are of security interest. They are there. Even in your room, I said, even in your bedroom, not everybody enters. That's what I said on record. But there are other places which you can go to, and I would want to invite the committee to go there. That I want to make it clear that they are places which are inaccessible by the public. That they are safe houses that we can go to. And indeed, he didn't give us that chance to be directed by him where those safe houses are. Can he write so that it can be on record now to tell us the safe houses that we can go to? so that we know the safe houses you're talking about? I, I think that is okay. Like I said, we are going to make our report. That's why we've called him at the tail point. So, Honorable Minister, since you said they are there, you can go ahead and tell us those ones are, that are there, those ones that can be visitable, and those ones that we can't visit. And then you proceed to other issues. We are moving. We are now moving to a good agreement uh, of the three uh, of the three houses which you visited, there was one of Chengera, which is a safe house and is a, is now a public <laughs> a safe house. I would, if you want to visit it, you are welcome. I have uh, uh, cleared with the. Uh, with the with the services that use it, that the, the, the why why don't you allow the members? But it must be on information that you are coming, not to go whenever you want at midnight or at the in the morning, 
we must have information that you are coming so that security is informed, the guards are informed, and then you enter. That is how things are done, and that's why I would want to welcome you. Tell me when you want to visit it, it will be available. <laughs> On the other hand, for the other houses, I can assure you, they will no longer be safe houses for those people who need safety if they are exposed to the public. And that's how security does its work, that there are some places which are of security interest for the interest of the public that are used. And that's what I said. And that's the truth. Which you want to know the truth, that is the truth. Whether you take it or you don't take it, that is the truth, which I cannot change. And it is not me. As I have said, I have worked in these services for quite a long. That's how security is done world over. Now, if Madame, I could go, because you sent me a specific, you sent me a specific invitation uh, to receive. It's the only committee house. If I had him be. well, yeah. and I just didn't want to ask him again, he said Chengera is a safe house that he knows. And he said, according to security, we must seek for, for, for permission. We don't just go, mm. according to him. And he said, there are others that can't be disclosed. And if they are disclosed, they will be no longer safe called houses. safe houses. That means he's not disclosing any other apart from Chengira. Did I understand you well, Honorable Minister? I didn't say I cannot disclose any other. If there is a need, we can disclose others. But, uh, I, I, and I, I have so far disclosed one. Honorable Minister, now just to save our time, yes. just give us just the list you of those ones that list. list. That list can never be given to you. This, this one that you said you repeat, can disclose. I repeat, they will no longer be safe houses if that list was given to you. So I that, that is what I say. I explained why these are used. Some of you may need protection from yourselves or from your activities, including members of parliament who have requested for security and protection. And, and we have provided them. Honor, Some honor, foreigners honor, have requested honor, for honor, protection. Honorable Minister, Honorable uh, Minister. Witnesses have his requested question, for protection. Honorable Minister, his question was, those ones that you can disclose to be known by the public, do you have others apart from Chengera? If you have them, give us and we'll record. If, uh, for those ones that you can't be disclosed for security reasons, it is okay, you leave them. Okay, then I, I only know of Chengera now. Proceed, yes. Honorable Minister. Thank Proceed. You, Honorable Chengera. That's yes. what he has said. Proceed. You come and we think they, they can be visited, you will be visited them. Madam Chair, you know, in reference to the letter you sent me, uh, AB 288516-01, dated 30th September, uh, that was on Monday. Uh, when I came from cabinet in the evening, I found that your letter had come uh, that was inviting me. And uh, it had uh, only some lists of witnesses who appeared here. Uh, and you wanted us to respond to those lists. I want this is a list of names and dates when people were arrested and possibly in some places. They don't mention who arrested them or who are suspected to have arrested them. So we don't know of these whom you pointed out in the letter, who was arrested by who. So I could not know. However, uh, uh, some of those who we have information about we shall give that information, and I have brought it. Honorable Minister, yes. we took that as a sample. Yes. Because according to the information that we are getting, so many people like you've just found people here. They are saying they were tortured in safe houses. So the first group that came to us, we took that as a sample, and then we gave you those people. So if you know of any safe house that is somewhere, in those names, if you know them, just sample and give us some highlight 
For those ones you don't know, it is okay. We shall still make our report. Thank you. And that's what we've done. Uh, we've looked at those whom we can respond to, and I will just also take like a sample. Yeah. Because uh, first and foremost, uh, as I said, I want to reiterate my earlier position that uh, ISO does not operate and gazette detention centers. Instead, ISO operates safe houses for only intelligence operations. It is, uh, of course, I, first of all, I want to make a, 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 a rider there. I am not here to be answered about all the problems or mistakes of ISO. I am not here to defend or, or, or condone mistakes of ISO. Wherever they are, we shall take the necessary action. And I want to be on record as personally myself. Point of order, Honorable Chair. Yes. Honorable of Security of the Republic of Uganda. So you are the direct supervisor. You are the political supervisor of internal security and external security. The intelligence agencies, they are answerable to you. So any mistake, you take a political responsibility. Because for us as a parliament, we deal with you. You are the one who is answerable to us. That's why you are appearing before us. So any mistake, you are, you are, you are the one. Political, you are the one who is supposed to answer. Yeah, you take responsibility. No, I agree that I take that. But what I'm saying, that I don't condone, that's the point I was making, that I don't condone anybody mistaking mistakes. If they make them, we... And by the way, I want to, first of all, from a good point of assurance, that from the information received, we're carrying out serious reforms and serious uh, analysis. Because we have... That, and that has been our practice. Uh, uh, Whenever there is a report, whenever there is an allegation, we don't take it lightly. We follow it up. And as I come along, we will see how we are moving so that we don't look, you don't take it as if I'm here to, to, to defend mistakes. I am not part of it, and I will not defend them. It is interesting to note, uh, Madam Chair, that most of these uh, complainants, that's very interesting, and I, am, I was happy to attend part of it because it really confirmed uh, what we are observing. Most of these are led, uh, uh, and as you see, you are led into uh, residential homes of unconcerned persons. Some of these claimants have their own interests, and they, 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 they should have... Uh, they, they not, don't take everything they say as gospel truth. And they are very, it's very interesting, because all these things they mention have a long history, sometimes behind it. And that's why you need to take, don't take everyone's presentation or complaint as gospel truth. Just as a, an intelligence body, ESO, receive, or other, or ESO, they receive all kinds of sources of intelligence information, especially on high-profile national security matters. And due to the sensitivity of such intelligence information, the sources prefer to be and some of these sources who come, those who bring information. They don't want to do it in public here. They want to do it in a protected place. And that's when they come and they, they give us information. Uh, however, some of them come along with high monetary expectations. I want you to understand that also. When they bring information, they come with expectations of financial uh, benefit. And some of them peddle lies, but after investigations, they are confronted with hard facts and they even sometimes become hostile. Somebody comes and says, I know who killed so and so. And you receive him. <coughs> You take his statement. He gives... Now, when you confront him with hard facts from what he has proposed, you find that actually he's a cerebral liar. And this is somebody who says, if they know I, that I have given this information, they will kill me. And then after that, when you say, but you are telling lies now, then he becomes very hostile. We then let them go. 
when they become hostile because he has not committed a crime only he's telling you lies but you confront him after that and then they are left to go we are yet to establish whose interests the people who have been reporting and going around uh, whose interests they are serving and turning around and then they they make false allegations so most of these things which they say are subject for investigation that you don't take it the surface value because as i've said you are really beginning to test what we go through almost on a daily basis we have that some politicians are mobilizing groups of people around the country to discredit security agencies on the international scene as well as on the local scene as violators of human rights that is not a secret we know that the people who work and who are sometimes paid for opposing and discrediting the government in a specific response to the highlighted persons okay. i'll pick one like just for the start gabola whom you pointed out as a number one in your invitation letter yes gabola was our first witness here now he about alone. gabola he about gabola bright africa those are his names his allegations of torture are false he postured to ISO as a key witness in a high-profile murder case. Uh, excuse me, Honorable Minister, can we get a copy? Yes. It, it, it is just my notes. Yes, my Pardon? notes. You leave it with us to photocopy and yes, internalize? I, I can give it. I can All right. Give it. But they, they, I have, I'm saying more than what is on paper, so that's why the record, it, it should be recorded. Uh, you should take what I have said on record rather than on the paper. Uh, he postured, as I said, as a key witness in a high-profile murder case, but after investigations, his information was discredited. He is expected to blackmail the organization in an attempt to attract public sympathy. He is a pathological, he, he is a pathological and consummate liar and we shall provide further of his criminal record and details on his dubious character. That uh, ex-convict, Gawala. For instance, Gawala lied that he had been charged with treason together with 24 other suspects, and yet he was A3, you gave us. Uh, this is the case of Mere Isma and Kayondo Justin who came to ISO upon being evicted from their land in, Mat in Mutungu, in Nakawa Division, Kampala. They had been assaulted and, and they claimed their lives were in danger. Upon investigation, we discovered that their matter was already before courts of law and they were on bail and therefore we could not let them stay with us. When they had come for protection, that their life was in danger, so those were allowed to go. Now, the Human Rights Committee of Parliament needs to be informed that all along we've been working, the, 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 the ISO uh, officials have been working with, with the police who are attached uh, to ISO and who are the ones who normally carry out arrests and searches and statement recording. Just to give an example, there is ASP Michael Jingo, or there is recently the late, the one who passed on recently, AIP Patrick Abgaba, and when the, some of, most of the arrests, they are, they are, they, they, I, I think all of the arrests are supposed to be done, and they are done with the collaboration with the police. Use of operations under investigation and against whom disciplinary action may be taken is those, as I have said, as I have said, those who violate the code of conduct of the organization are disciplined. And we have some examples. Uh, Captain Elijah Mwesige retired, who was dismissed. Others who are pending uh, disciplinary committee investigations, Major Amos Artejeka, Sergeant Apun Rojoseph, Corporal Opoka Charles, Private Okwanga Celestino, CPC Okui, 
and many others which you have been disciplining whenever they violate the rules and the code of conduct of the organization. Now, for the other names, uh, the approach has been on several occasions, uh, has been led successful apprehension of suspects in public interests. The persons with existing criminal cases registered with the police include among those you gave us. One, Mukwaya Isma. He is charged of theft of motorcycle, and the case is uh, CRB. I don't have even the, 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 the cases are mentioned there. Bukenya Isma robbery, Seguya Moses robbery, Okwale Joseph illegal firearm and rape, Motebe Latif robbery, Segawadeo murder and armed robbery, Mulindwa Abdu murder, armed robbery, Kamoga Swale robbery and murder. Okwera Ronald, possession of illegal firearm. Okwil Daniel, possession of illegal firearm. Mukungu Bashir, murder and armed robbery. Ongomu James, theft of motor vehicle. Saturday uh, Joachim, theft of motor vehicle. And Nsereko Musa, robbery. Just mention some of those names. So really, some of these have cases who, which are in, in the police, the ones of the names you, you pointed out here. And they were in, they are taken to police and they are in, in, in courts of law. The allegation is delivered by persons who appeared before the committee are unfortunate and to a certain extent uh, are meant to, de, to, to, to discredit the organization. It is important for the organization, this is now ISO, to be accorded reasonable time to investigate fully and provide further details if any subject uh, if, any, if any subject as long as it does not violate section 10 of the security organizations act cap 305 uh, which uh, provides for no disclosure of intelligence information because if they do we, t we charge it they can even be sentenced to life imprisonment or 14 years of imprisonment if they disclose intelligence information on the whole what I can say is that let us work together. Most of these, the information which you give, actually is of security interest. Whatever information which you get, and if you give it to us, it's our duty to investigate, to follow, and where there is fault, I, uh, discipline those who, are, uh, uh, who, 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 who violate the code of conduct. It, that in the list of relatives who complained about their missing loved ones, out of the eight names provided, two have active cases with their reference numbers at various police stations, namely Bashir Mukung of Chitemu, Mada, robbery from Kasangati, is a case CRB 805-2018 and registered as number four. Segawadeo of Chitemu, Mada, armed robbery from Kasangati, CRB 805 of 218, registered as number five. But besides these cases, there were other issues of intelligence and security nature that ISO has, was handling with the two characters. Periodically, five of the people reported as missing or in custody by the relatives parliament do not even appear in the list of the 59 missing people, which was tendered to, parliamentary, to the Parliamentary Committee by Honorable Latif Sebagara, titled Missing Persons Held in Safe Houses, dated 4th September 2019, and these are, of, of those you provided, uh, Sad Katikembo, Bukenya David, Sengoba Jofre, Salongo, Kasumba Abu Bakara, and Nasa Kimboa. So really, these are just, um, what I'm saying is, thank you very much uh, for the work which the committee is doing. Partners with us, let's work together. The biggest room in the world is room for improvement for everyone. And we are on the same board. We are on the same line of working towards uh, ensuring human rights, uh, human rights uh, for our people. 
and we work closely. That's what I want also to explain, that really, it's not that human rights violations, or in some cases, have not have happened just now. It has been ongoing, it has been a, con a continuous struggle, and we work very, very closely with the Human Rights Commission. But what they do, and which I would advise the committee to take as a method of work, when they get a case, they bring it to us, and they question us. In the UPDF, there is even a human rights team of the UPDF, which follow up issues of human rights. So I really want to say that really this co continuous effort of fighting against those who are violating the rights of our people should continue, but don't take things that uh, you receive from people for granted. And let's work together, together to really fight these violations. I will not condone anybody who violates our code of conduct and I'm on record, as I told you, and I told the other committee, I'm a very strong disciplinarian. And my personal record is clear. I will not, I, when I was the Director General of External Security Organization, I don't think there was any report of things uh, that could be brought for our organization. So really, comrades, this is part and parcel of our work. Help us and we help you for us to fight together. I thank you. Very attentive listening to the minister. Madam Chair, I think the minister should first clarify, because the letter you sent to him, he was supposed to be accompanied by the director ISO and SFC. So he has not explained to us, because we thought as it is done in all other committees, who have seen ministers coming along with those uh, technical people whom they are supervising. So. Let the minister first inform us why he has again come alone without the data, General ISO, and also the SFC as per the letter. Before I go to other questions. Yes, Chair. Yeah, I, I, it's true the letter was saying I should come with the Director General ISO and the Commander SFC. When I looked at the letter, first of all, as I said, there was no specific reference to the either ISO, CMI, uh, SFC. I did not, we want, because the committee, according to the rules, is supposed to give the things to be answered. And if they were specific for SFC, then we would know these are for SFC to answer. If they were specific for ISO, then we would know these are for ISO. Now, for them coming, that one, uh, they, are, they, are, they are busy now with security matters, but I thought that we could, I could explain what was in the letter rather than stop them for whatever they are doing uh, to come with them here. But if there was anything specific for SFC, then we would see how they can answer for themselves. Madam Chair, I'm not convinced at all. Because as a committee, in our wisdom, we have interacted with the minister. This is the third time. The minister is doing it a very great disservice because there are issues that must be clarified by the Director General ISO, as we have heard from our witnesses, which the minister cannot. And he said he's not going to take responsibility on those he's supervising. Oh, Madam Chair, he said you are not taking responsibility to any uh, human rights abuse from those you are supervising yes, out together. Now, if on. you have, Madam, Madam Chair, if we have insisted since the committee began and the gist of our investigation rotates around ISO, the minister is not the one who is really uh, 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 in, uh, in daily uh, work of ISO. Therefore, we will be doing a disservice to write our report minus what the Director General ISO uh, has to say. So it is the minister who is doing a disservice to the, to the Director General ISO because there are so many allegations that you wanted him to clarify or to put right. Madam Chair, I'm not convinced because we have seen, first and foremost, the other time he told us, no, they are not supposed to come. But I think he realized that that was wrong we cannot fail as a committee to interface with any technocrat, with anybody 
who has uh, an issue in, in, in as far as parliamentary committees are concerned. So, Madam Chair, I will, the, 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 the reasoning, the minister is advancing, does not carry any water. Because if they are saying that they are busy now doing security work, they are always busy. And we are always busy. But we wanted to get it from him, all these allegations, so that he can get a chance to clean his record. Otherwise, what will be on our report? That we invited Director General Iso several times, he didn't appear. And in any case, if you don't appear, then that means there's a case that you have failed to put across. So, Madam Chair, I'm not convinced. Yes, or no? It was the first. Was, mm. Honorable Chair, colleagues, and uh, the Minister, the procedural point I'm raising, Madam Chair, is. I thought the minister supervises that area. And I thought that when you are supervising whichever ministry, if there are issues which you, as a person who, that you can't answer, they are supposed to be put down. And maybe the supervisor will inquire from the person he works with. The, the procedure point I'm raising, Madam Chair, is whether the questions were put so that we can say that maybe the ministry has failed to do its duty. Madam Chair, that's the procedure point I'm raising. Yeah. Just to clarify the letter that was written and then we sent to him. But why members decided that they should also, he should also come with the other two? It is because of the expected questions that would maybe arise that they would answer. Further proceed, Honorable Chair. Yes, please. Uh, strictly on that, I think even our clerk didn't tell the us. Because when you told the Minister of Security to come alongside the command of SFC, that's not the chain of command. SFC is under defense. For him, his area is internal security and external security. So next time the, the clerk is writing, we expect the Minister of Defense here to come with the CDF and then the commander SFC, because that is the hierarchy. He has no, he has no business with SFC. It's not under his docket. Thank you. And Chair, what the minister is saying, I don't think there, there is nothing that, that really concerns the, 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 the ISO, the ISO boss, the Kaka. Because maybe it was not very clear in the letter, but throughout the testimonies that have been here, Mr. Kaka has been, I don't know his titles, has been referred to. So it would be prudent enough for him to appear here so that he, he says something, he has a right to be heard before we make a report. Honorable Minister. Uh, procedure, procedure, uh, Chair. You know, in the government, particularly when we communicate, we may not know exactly who is under whom. But uh, under normal circumstances, the government itself reorganizes itself and makes sure when it is presenting, all of the available information is available. So you don't need to blame our, our, that she did not uh, communicate properly. It is up to government. A minister is somebody who is very responsible. He can organize all of those ones. He even has his superior. He can go to and it is organized and all of them come in, in, in a place. So you don't need to blame her, I think. Let's, let me hop on that, on that procedural issue. The minister will say something on that. Then we'll go on something else. Madam, More other areas of clarification. I'm sorry, follow. Yes, please. Madam Chair, uh, ended well. And in fact, even in the minister, in his response, he did not mention anything that SFC is not under. We know he's not in that direct command, but as government, there is a way of how you can organize and ensure that uh, uh, we, 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 we do what we are supposed to do. Madam Chair, because now this one is left to the minister that he has not really helped the letter, you know, ISO, 
to be heard by this committee because we have done our work. We have tried, we have failed. And that will be what we are going to capture. Madam Chair, the Minister has talked about that some politicians that are being used. Madam Minister, I will request Madam Chair, the Minister to throw more light. Because that is a blank check. He's saying that some politicians, we are all politicians. We are politicians. So if you cannot mention the names of those who are using, uh, there are some elements that are being used in order to discredit the government. Because we are talking on matters of human rights. And human rights cut across. And we don't know who is who. So the moment you, you bring, you put out a blank, really, without mentioning that so and so is using some elements to discredit the government. So would you like to throw more light on that? And secondly, Madam Chair, the minister, the names we gave him, he has responded that they have charges to answer. And some of them are murder, underline, murder charges. Madam Chair, does it really ring a bell that we have a government, we have a whole minister who is in charge of security, he has people on murder charges, but they don't have any case anywhere, and they have not that been taken to court, and they are not in Rosina, and they, even here, they will be the, here. The witnesses who have seen, he has talked about Bashir Mukungu and others, they are on murder ch charges, but they are they are at large. Does it really ring a bell that we talk about those who are under robbery, under murder charges, but there is no any court proceeding that they were taken to courts, they have been in Rosilla, these people have been in safe houses, they have been released without any case, even at police. Madam Chair, we can investigate further. All the people have talked about that they, they have murder charges or cases. There is no any case in courts of law as we shall continue with our investigation. And some of them have been here. Finally, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, when we talk about, uh, the minister has said is our ally in as far as protecting human rights is concerned. Madam Chair, our committee, whatever the case that has been committed by any Ugandan is not our issue. Our issue is how these cases, how these suspects are being handled. Because even if someone is being suspected that he killed or there is a robbery case, the way how you handle him or her is a concern. Because according to our constitution, you are innocent until proved guilty. We have seen those who are being suspected, those are taken to safe houses, they are tortured, and after some time, they come out to say they have no case to answer. Our concern is about how you handle suspects, how you can keep suspects in one, uh, for two years, for one year, without being taken to courts. And when the charges are not, uh, 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 when the, the, the cases are very light. So our concern is why do you take people to those safe houses, two years, one year, month, without bringing them to courts of law, and yet they have been tortured. That is the concern of this committee. I would like to get clarification from the minister. Uh, Honorable Minister, you say that uh, many of these people come as sources of intelligence. And you said that professionally, some of them may require protection because of the nature of information that they are providing. And sometimes the sources themselves request for the protection. And that's the, 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 the phenomenon of, of safe houses. I agree with the minister. But my question to the minister is, are you aware of the allegations
being given out by people who claim to have been taken to Chengera safe house, claims of torture, claims that while there they were hanged on chains in the space. For one of them said for eight days. Are you aware of such allegations? Then this other uh, location of Kalangala, the island. Hono Minister, are you aware of any such activities on that island? Some island called Ramayuba, of which we have received here some photographs showing how the, the place looks like, and also photographs of people uh, that claim we are taken from this particular location. So, for the Minister, clarify on this. Much as I agree with you, and I, I appreciate the clarification. Forward the photos to him. Yes, Honorable Nsubuga. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Minister for having appeared the committee before this committee and the presentation he has made. Now, Honorable Minister, from what you have already presented, my area of interest is in partnership. I think you are appearing before this committee for the third time in less than two months. For us as a committee, we have our mandate to check on excesses as far as human rights observation is concerned. But it's going to be pulling ropes every now and then. How can we pattern? How can we work together? From your experience, good enough, you have served in all of these capacities. How can we need to work? Between you and me, the other day it was quite simple to see a committee of parliament knocking at the headquarters of external security organization, referring to it as a safe house. Maybe there is no partnership. Order. Honorable Nsubuga, where you've not been, you never say what you don't know. I'm informing the minister. No, no, don't inform the minister because even if you're informing the minister, it is before this committee. Don't say what you don't know because you didn't go with us. You don't know the intention as to. It is no longer safe house. Out together. So for me, as a member of this committee, Honorable Minister, my area of interest, how can we network? Secondly, as one member has already pointed, it would be very good that as you are coming along the way, you come with your technical people. The DG of internal security he has been summoned by this committee. There is no harm if you come with him and answer some of the questions which pointed at him as a person or as the head of the agency which you supervise all together. So, lastly, I want to maintain it as a member of this committee that what we need is to network, not to appear as if one is fighting the what? The other. If we are going in the field, we should move that. But they would have been even with you. Or someone to go with you, someone from your office. So, on that note, I, 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 let me stop my submission. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, we work within a framework of rules. We have a constitution, we have acts of parliament, and we have subsidiary legislation. Now, you have seen what is happening. I mean, it happens because we see it on TV when you are arrested, when people are being arrested. You have heard testimonies of experiences of people in safe houses. Now, my question is that the Honorable Minister, do you think these are within the framework of laws that govern all of us, or they are outside? 
or honorable minister, if they are not within the framework, have you made any proposal for the framework to be modified so that security can operate in a framework that actually, that actually can contain the insecurity that is prevailing? Because we have to be in a framework. The moment we don't work within that framework, it is even a recipe for a lot of insecurity. It's a recipe for a lot of insecurity. And me, my concern is, are we working within the framework? For example, when you go to Article 24, I've quoted it many times, this is respect for human dignity and protection from human treatment. Are we are working within that, frame, that article of the Constitution, or we are out of it? It's definitely a very good honorable minister to make sure we don't have robbers, we don't have killers within the society. But we also know we cannot eliminate all of them. And we also know we have got to work within a framework. Are we honestly, honorable minister, are we really working within the framework or our actions as depicted are outside the framework? And if it is outside the framework, have you made any proposals to modify that framework so that insecurity is probably brought down to a manageable level because I know you cannot completely, as a human being, completely eliminate it. Me, that is my worry, and I think the worry of this committee is really the way suspects are handled and the way the, law, the, the rent they spend in those uh, places called safe houses and so on, and uh, that is the worry. We are not saying it should not be done, because these are criminals, if it is proved. But we are saying, is it within the framework of the laws that govern the country? That is the biggest problem I think I can see uh, on myself. And I would want your comment whether you are actually operating within this framework of laws that we have in Uganda now. I would like to thank the minister for his cooperation. I think we've come a long way with him. And uh, I agree with some of the points he has raised. For example, while around, honestly, you cannot let everyone get into the security installations and things like this. I agree with you, honestly. All over, even in advanced democracies like America, there are places that are restricted to the public. I agree with you on that. And um, even your willingness to uh, avail to this committee the names of some of these places uh, that are uh, namely, uh, named as safe houses, I think is, is quite a sign of cooperation to us. I must commend you for that. I thank you for that. But I think to make your hands very clean, it would be good to have Mr. Kaka here. Because allegations have been made against him as a person. And he needs to be given a chance to defend himself. This report will not be complete without hearing from Mr. Kaka. That's my request. I think if you do that and cooperate with us, you would have done better than what you have done before. And I would like to appeal for that. Thank you once more, and I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, Bo, the Safe Houses. Honorable Minister, actually, I was among those and uh, I peeped. Honorable Minister, it is you who prompted us. Because if you didn't give us a leeway, then what would we do? We, would, we had to reach there, and you know, eyes have no limit. That's why we peeped. It is you who didn't give us guidance. But now you can... Yeah, honorable members, we have the IGP coming here to meet us and the DPP. So I also request the honorable minister to be as brief as possible and direct to the point. Not, I, I will keep saying this, some people don't like it, but... I want to repeat is that really we went to the bush for fighting human rights. And we shall be, for all these years, 
this government has been working hard to ensure that our Ugandans are free from this uh, abuse of the law. And therefore, I like the words of partnership. But on the issue of the allegations, that's a very good issue. Allegations and claims which are made, including even these photographs and what. Again, these are of security interest. And they cannot quickly be concluded and taken. You see, the press takes the negative side most of the time, the media. That's, for them, they look what is, because it sells more than the positive. In life, there are two. Those two are necessary, positive and negative. So, but each case needs to be examined according to its own merit, rather than make a blanket uh, assertion. As if, if like, the, the, and it comes to the, the type of arrests, where they are kept, how they are, they are, they are treated. Each case needs to be investigated. And that's why the partnership is that if you have information, it is, that's what we do. We receive information from institutions, we receive information from individuals, we receive information from even external friends about crimes and about insecurity. So, if there is anything that you can give us, and allegations against our own staff, as I said, I want to assure you, and I have said we are on record, wherever there is indiscipline, wherever there is abuse of the law, to come back to the point of framework, we are actually acting in the, in the framework of the law. Where there are violations, we are saying, let them be pointed out, and we act together against it. And we get those who are concerned to book. Now, on the issue of Nyindukaka uh, coming here, really, what I requested, because you are saying that there are some specific issues against him as a person, where I did, in all the letters that I have received of invitation, there is the committee needs, and it is required of the committee, procedurally, even according to the law, that you mention before somebody comes, what is he coming to answer? You outline what issues he should prepare to come and answer. When you give me the issues, me, I prepare and come and answer them. And that's how it should be. So I request the chair that I think if there are specific issues for Ndugukaka to come and explain, let them be specifically one mentioned so that he prepares to answer those questions. Not, not to invite, yes, that's the procedure for procedure of committees. You don't invite anybody without that's what the law, Article 90. Yes, really. procedure. yes. Procedure. you must procedure. mention what you are inviting him to answer, not just invite a person. Uh, the, in the letter, Honorable Minister, it, it mentioned about the, the victims, the, those who testified, and they were in, 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 the, in the safe houses that the Kaka manages, right? Yes. So, that, that alone is enough to show that Mr. Kaka has something to answer because he's the one who is in charge of, the, of ISO and the safe houses. And for so, I don't know what extra... Maybe you wanted us to write a whole book of all the cases and testimonies that have been... Uh, here, when everybody says, I was tortured by Kaka, so and so, because yeah, we so, have the, the letter is specific about ISO, and the ISO boss is Kaka. Further procedure, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, it is very clear, unless when the minister is hiding something, Madam Chair, since we started all these investigations, at no any one time, the name Kaka did not surface. He's doing a disservice to the person he's supervising. And that's why we are calling them allegations. And it's not about Honorable Eli Tumwini. Nobody has mentioned his name. But they are mentioning the name of Geno Kaka. Kano Kaka. So I think there's the minister trying to tell us that bring, uh, give us uh, areas where uh, Kaka is going to answer, I think that is irrelevant. We have had all witnesses talking about Kaka. 
So, if the minister decides that we conclude our report without hearing from Kaka, then we shall do what is available to us. Otherwise, minister, there is nothing that we can talk more about Kaka. He has been accused by so many witnesses. We want him to clear his name. Yeah, Chair, I am not uh, opposed to the, the, the right for somebody to write of reply, or write of clearing one name. That's a good one. And, uh, and that's why I said, you see, if I went to the law, it requires the Parliamentary and Privileges Act. It requires that you re a request for the proposed issues and questions for consideration. Oh, by, by the committee, so that you know there is a level, the, 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 the Article 10, Section 10 of the uh, of the Security Organizations Act prohibits intelligence personnel from divulging information, and that's why the, the both not only the installations but even the personnel need to be protected from diverging information. And that's why it should be specific. What should he, so that he knows, he comes when he knows what specific questions he has to answer so that he avoids having to diverge intelligence information. Me, at my level and seniority, I know what to give and what not to give. So that's why it needs to be, it is a requirement of the law. Yes, but it must be specific. What do you want him to Order, answer? Chair. It must be written. Madam Without Chair. writing, I don't see it's not Madam ego. Chair. Madam if you Chair. don't write it, just call somebody Madam and, Chair, and answer any question. Is it Madam not Chair. Chair. A right? I don't, Madam Chair, the minute his interest to be heard, and our records are clear that you have tried, that Kaka be heard. Madam Chair, if he's talking about what are the issues, as a committee on human rights, let Kaka come and tell us how human rights are being protected within his institution. Period. Within the institution. Period. You need it in writing to us or to him. Exactly what you want him to answer should be written so that he prepares. Don't just invite the face of somebody. You write it. Say an allegation. They must be specifically written that there is this allegation and claim. Put it in writing, then we answer it. And each one, not just blanket. Uh, then somebody was talking about, are we, uh, are we working, or working to rectify if there are problems, to work in the framework? Yes, as I have said, we are carrying out reforms by the way, one of the things that was causing a problem in the past, and which you all have heard, there was a bit of miscoordination between the services, between the police, between ISO, between... The... So, what I don't think you have heard about it of recent, a lot of things are being improved where there were mistakes. And therefore, I want to give you hope and assurance that we work together to improve together and those reforms and uh, improving our security will continue. Uh, then there was, on the allegations, that's why I've said, each case, if there is a specific allegation, write it down, we, we shall answer it, or whoever is concerned will answer that allegation. Those are the points I thought, uh, Chair. Now, you are bringing, I, I, I like the way you gather your intelligence. Very interesting. <laughs> you get a photograph, you say, there is evidence. Please, that is just a starting point. <laughs> that is a starting point for serious investigation. And investigation does not take even one day or two. It's not automatic. When you get a lead, it is just a lead, but it's not conclusive. And I, I, I really want you to get interested. I mean, since we shall be working together, I want you to see how we will be improving every day by getting to know the people you are dealing with the information you receive, information. The, method, the, information methods, the methods of doing it, all of you are in getting in, beginning to be interested in this work. So appreciate when we tell you that allegations or things like this, this is how things they are done. Because we've been at it for all this time, 
and we know how complicated it is. Yes, information, madam. Uh, Honorable Minister, just we have not made any conclusions yet about the photographs that have been that are here, but we could not refuse to receive them. The witnesses had them and they presented them, and we are also showing you. So this is an investigation. It is the beginning. We oh, we have a lot of questions to ask ourselves, of course, because we can't ask the witnesses themselves. How did they get a camera into a safe house? How do we know that this photo is actually taken into a safe house? So we uh, do not uh, look at us and think like now that we have got photos, we have gathered information and we are pinning ISO that they are doing this. No. Those are just the photos you found in the committee and we are sharing with you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that's what I was saying. But so that what, and as I have said, each of us, by the way, one of the things, I want to repeat this, one of the things we do in the parliament, we representatives of UPDF, is receiving information in relation to security, in relation to UPDF, so that we follow it up with our security agencies. And we shall continue doing that. And it does not matter. Now, there's a point where I said politics. Yes, I remember. Yes, one of them is Sebagara, Honorable Sebagara. Honorable Sebagara, because you don't want to go very far. First of all, we know that there is a, an opposition side of is government. That's the last point you're making, yes, because we have one. other it people that we want. I'm I've forgotten. Yes. It is the last one. We know that there is a side who, whose work is to oppose this side to get it out so that they come in, and this one goes the other side, and they use every opportunity to discredit this side. Honorable Sebagara, if you use him as an example, me, I don't like to go side to side like this. I go direct. He speaks a lot of things without concrete evidence. And some of the evidence he brings, when we investigate, we find it is all politics, including people who are telling you that this is a safe house. This is a safe house. So please, these are, for, and you had cameras waiting to show the public, which was not correct. So there are politicians who are on record whose work is to malign government and especially discredit security. I repeat it, and you might even have heard it from the president. Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you very Madam much. Madam Chair, he has mentioned my name. I have so, to respond. Yeah, yes, yes, because of that, Madam say Chair, something and we wind up. Madam Chair, it does not ring a bell that a member of parliament raising an issue 